Welcome to Solid Camp Professor. I'm Sydney, your Solid Camp Professor, with one of many videos available to you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. In this recording, we'll be showing you the option of rest material and chamfer. Now let's go back to the previous operation where I worked around the outside and left these large corners over here. As we can see, inside the simulation you can see that the corners there's a lot of material left in the corners itself so for that we're going to use the option of rest material we'll just do a simple save and copy in this particular case i'll go into my tool and i'll change it to a six millimeter end mill my levels will stay the same my technology will stay the same i'll make some just some changes in my rough cut step down and my finish step down i'll have my rough cut step down go down every three millimeters and i'll do the same for my finish now we'll go into our area of rest material chamfer if i click on the button and choose rest note what happens on top it automatically opens up another tab called rest and puts me inside that tab now inside rest, we have two different milling type options. One is separate areas for working on separate areas only, only in areas where the previous tool could not work in. And we also have a round profile. A round profile will go around the entire profile, but in those corners where the larger end mill could not work, it'll work slower. In this particular case, I'll use the option of separate areas. Next will go to previous diameter. Here I can write down what the previous diameter was used over there. I can rewrite the actual tool or something even larger if I want. In any case, it always must be larger than the actual tool that I'm going to be using now. However, if I do not remember the tool that I used before, I can always go into previous tool diameter as shown over here and choose it from my list. And in this particular case, it was a 25 millimeter end mill. Next, we write down the previous wall offset, which was 0.5 millimeters. And we have one more option of extension overlap. What extension overlap does is at the entrance point, it actually extends where to actually start from and to finish from, giving it a little bit of an overlap between this tool and the tool that we used previously. In this particular case, I'll just put a value of one millimeter. Going into my link, we'll leave our link the exact same way. Let's run our simulation and we'll run it slowly. You'll see that the tool will go down and work only on that corner area. Since I did a rough and finish, it's doing both rough and finish in that corner as well. And then go over to the next corner as well, and then finish the part all the way around on all sides as shown over here. Now let's go back to the previous operation where I did both a rough and finish cut. And what I'm going to do here is take away the finish cut and leave it only at rough. So now when I go into my next operation where I did the rest machining, we're going to make a little change over here. I'm going to leave this at finish only. However, when I go into my rest material, I'm going to change my milling type from separate areas to a round profile. What this will do now is we'll do, it will do a finish cut around the entire profile, but in the areas where the 25 millimeter end mill could not clean, it'll work at a slower feed, the one that feed that I would put in over here. Say for example, 50 millimeters, just so we can have an example of what's going to happen. Let's run our simulation now, and we'll take a look at our simulation together with our simulation data, and we'll take a look at the feed in particular. As the tool goes in, it goes in with radius and then it has our feed over here of 300 millimeters per minute. Now, as it goes to the corner, as you'll see now, it all of a sudden changes to 50 millimeters per minute until it leaves that corner. When it goes back, it turns back to 300 and the same thing on every single corner, it'll actually work its way down to a slower feed in order to get to where it has to go to, working slower in those corners 
all around the entire part. Now let's take a look at our chamfering option. For that, what I'll do is I'll actually take all the operations I've done over here and suppress them. I'll get rid of my stock that I had before and create a new stock. And the new stock will be the actual model itself, as if I'm working on a part that's already been completely machined. And I just want to add chamfers on the edges. I'll start a new operation of 2.5D profile and I'll choose a geometry. And in this particular case, I'll just use this geometry over here, this chain going around the part over there. And the same for this side over here as well. I'll accept that. I'll choose a tool. In this particular case, I need to create a chamfering tool. So I'll go and create a new tool, chamfer drill, diameter of 10 millimeters, and an angle of 90 degrees. When I go to my levels, my profile depth will actually be the depth of the chamfer that I want. In this particular case, I want to put in a half a millimeter chamfer, so I'll just write 0.5 millimeters. Now let's go to technology and we'll leave it just on finish. And we'll go to our rest material chamfer area and choose the option of chamfer. When chamfer comes up, the important field for us to deal with is the cutting diameter. What is the actual diameter that's going to come in contact first with the edge? In this particular case, I'll have one millimeter diameter on that edge over there. If we go into our, back to our technology, you'll also note that we have here the option of compensation. In this particular case, I'd like to actually not use compensation, and I'll explain that as we go on later on in this part itself. In our links, I'll use my approach, my lead in and lead out as an arc, and let's run our simulation. If we take a look at the simulation, you'll see that the tool will go in, create the chamfer around the part itself, and you'll note it's working on one millimeter of that particular tool, as shown over there, and going down exactly to the depth that it needs to go down in the part. Also note that I used the one millimeter of the tool so it does not go too deep as to touch this floor over here. Now I'd like to continue and do the exact same thing around this edge over there. So what I'll do is I'll do just save and copy, create a new geometry around this edge over here, and we'll have our same tool, our levels, and this time my upper level will be this surface over here, and again the depth will be point five millimeters. We'll leave it at our finish cut and we'll leave our chamfer at the moment with the same cutting diameter. Let's run our simulation on the part itself and as the tool goes in you'll see the tool will go in and let's stop for a moment over here and take a look at the side view. Now in this particular case we have no problem and we can actually use this without worrying about the tool being too big that will touch this area. But if this was too big, we'd need a different cut and diameter over here. So what we would do in that particular case is we go into chamfer and use a different cut and diameter for this tool, say two millimeters. Now when I do that, we take a look at our simulation, the tool will actually be further away, again looking at the side view. This time it's further away from that edge. Now, because I'm using two different cutting diameters on the same tool, in my technology field, I have had my compensation turned off. This way, I do not have to worry about my compensation on the machine for the same tool in two different geometries, in two different operations. If I need to make a correction, all I have to do is make a correction in the height of the tool itself on the machine. For more videos on SolidCam Professor, please go to our website www.solidcam.com and look for the tab called SolidCam Professor. Thank you for joining us on SolidCam Professor. 
Take care and have a nice day.